Welcome back to the podcast. Today's episode is all about your number one key to success. We talk about a lot of things on this podcast. Um, The number one skill to have, though, is to be able to determine what an obstacle is that you have in your business, your home, your personal life, and being able to find a solution to any obstacle that you face in any of those three areas. So today's episode is all about putting on your CEO hat. Take off all of your other hats for just a moment. Put on your CEO hat, um, your business woman hat, and we are going to walk through, Marley's going to walk us through a strategy that she uses um, with herself, with me, clients, anybody who comes to her with an obstacle, um, two quick steps that you can take anytime you come to an obstacle to pinpoint that obstacle and be able to find a quick and simple solution to overcome this. So this means that you are now a professional problem solver. This means that you are a find a way, make a way woman. We are not going to let this obstacle keep us from getting what we actually want. So you are going to learn today how to find a way over, around, under, or through this obstacle that you're able to pinpoint. So Marley, can you walk us through your steps? And then we can talk about some examples of how we've both been able to do this in our businesses. Yeah, I want to start by saying it really is a skill to be able to identify obstacles because what I see so often is business owners getting almost spending too much time not recognizing that they have an obstacle. So if they were really good at identifying when something isn't working or when something isn't flowing the way they want it to, whether that be their schedule, the way that they feel coming into work every day because something at home isn't um, flowing well, the way they start their day, the way they end their day, you know, just all of these little things. The, the ability, the skill to identify when something isn't optimized and then create a strategy to move through it. That's what we're going to talk about today. The strategy with two tools that I use that are going to help you practice identifying and overcoming obstacles that in time will make you this process a lot faster. So something won't have to bug you for months and months and months before you recognize that it's bugging you and then you can create a solution for it really quickly. Like I'm giving you a 10 minute timer. And what I, what I want to say too, is a client of mine recently was on a call with me and, you know, I asked her how things were going and she was in that conversation because she knows how I think being in my space was just, she, she literally walked herself through. It's going great. Here's what's going good. You know, this thing has been happening. And I, um, you know, specifically she has a new baby and she recognized that, um, when she's ducking away to work on her business, she gets, you know, 30 minutes here or there, her husband and her both work from home. And she was finding that, you know, that transition in and out of mom to business life. She was getting really in the zone after a call in business. And then because she had, you know, allotted a 30 minute call, 30 minutes to business, she was going to duck back and take over from her husband with their newborn And she said, I'm finding I'm so energized and creative after a call. And then I'm not giving myself enough space to utilize that energy before I duck into mommy world. And then when I come back to that idea that I wrote down, my energy behind it has gone, my passion, my inspiration. And then she's finding that it's like the momentum is lost. So in that, I was just like, do you know what you just did? I have never related more to... (laughs) a story than that one. It was so fun to see her do it because she said to me, I didn't have to say a word. She said, and I guess I probably need to have a conversation with my husband about that. Like it had been obviously bugging her. It had been something they were working, they were doing in their flow and they were just in their routine and their habit. And just in that simple saying it out loud, having the space, the, the, the container, right. To focus on something like that. She was able to say, here's what's in my way. Oh, and here's a solution that I could create right now. And it's literally about adding an extra 10 or 15 minutes to that work time, you know? So let me, let me dive into this. And then I'm going to share with you um, where this like evolved from this whole thing through um, my my own experience as a work at home mom with a new baby and um, some of the internal struggles I had with 
wanting to work more and um, wanting to keep my baby at home with me and be the super mom that does it all as he was becoming more mobile, busy, napping less. And, um, you know, and that was just like budding heads, me wanting to be the mom that had my son home with me that could be there for all the moments and the minutes and um, not wanting to put him in daycare, but then also having this really strong desire to work my business more and um, using these two tools that I'm going to walk you through that are so simple, so quick, I was able to identify um, what was the biggest priority that I needed to next solve in my business at that time and then how to do so. So I call these, there's two exercises that I do. The first is called the bug list. And it is literally about what is bugging me. So step one in this is it is your job to create a list of everything that's currently bugging you. So if you literally grab a piece of paper and um, and put it on your desk or put it wherever you work or carry it around your house with you, mm-hmm. because I would encourage you, especially if you're like Becca and myself and you're working from home, you're probably going to need a list for home and for business and maybe even specifically kids, household tasks, my marriage, my business, my back end tasks, working with clients. Like you can eventually get really specific with the categories that you're you're analyzing um, and you can go into more depth, maybe quarterly or, you know, annually. But just day to day, you're just going to create a list, get a piece of paper out. And anytime something bugs you, write it down. Oh, that laundry's over there. And I really meant to fold it last night and I didn't. And I'm noticing it as I'm sitting here on a call with a client and it's staring at me and it's calling my name and it's distracting me. That's something that's bugging you, right? Oh, I need to send out. I've never had laundry call my name. (laughs) You don't relate to that one? (laughs) That is a lie. You're a liar. (laughs) Um, But you know, it's it's bugging you. Maybe it didn't call your name in a in a nice way, but it was calling your name like. Hey, Becca, I'm over here and you should have done me last night and now you're not paying attention to your client, right? So working from home, there's so many little challenges that people don't realize when they leave the home. And so many of us, um, I mean, working from home is like, what's the word? Fantasized? That's not the right word. Romanticized. Roman- there we go. Romanticized. And it is beautiful. I don't ever want us to leave, but there are a lot of challenges in working from home that we don't realize, especially as mothers carrying a lot of mental load around here. Um, it can, there can be some things that it adds to that list of mental load. So, um, the step one is just noticing, just getting good at noticing things that are bugging you. And then I think I'm maybe a little bit annoying about this, but like, I, I don't want to complain about a problem without having a solution. Like I'm like, I want to fix it. I'm Mr. Fix it over here. Mrs. Fix it. If, if there's a problem that someone comes to me with, I'm like, Oh, do you, I have, I've trained myself to go, do you need me to just listen and you need to vent or do you want a solution? Cause I could give you 10. Um, (laughs) I love strategizing. I love problem solving. So it's because I've built this muscle of identifying when things are bugging me, when you sit down at your computer to do work in your business, what are you avoiding? What are you putting off? What are you excited to do? Um, so really noticing what's bothering you about which tasks, what feels hard, what feels disorganized, write it all down and get specific or get broad, whatever it looks like, just write whatever comes to your mind down. I think another way to determine if something is, um, an obstacle for you or a challenge or struggle, whatever you want to call it. What do you get those anxious feelings about? Like, what do you, maybe for you, it's sick to your stomach. For me, it is this anxiety that I can feel in my chest. I can feel a tightness. I can feel um, almost like a mini panic, but it never goes away because I don't have a solution to that problem. And, and I know it's a problem when that feeling starts coming up. And Mm. it used to be before I started using this tool, um, it used to be that I would sit in that state for a really long time without realizing that that was what I was experiencing. There is a problem. There's an obstacle here. And if you just find a solution for that obstacle, then we can move past these feelings and get back to excitement and business again. Um, And I think it may not always be your brain going, Oh, this feels hard. I don't really like this. It could be some subconscious, like actual physical feelings that you're having. 
Yeah. And, and that's a really great point. How are you feeling about the tasks that you have to do? Um, and then also, um, oh gosh, don't leave my brain thought um, promises. There we go. The promises you keep telling yourself, making to yourself that you continually break. Yeah. So Becca, I'm not going to say this has anything to do with you and I, like definitely it doesn't, but like, are you telling yourself you want to exercise more <laughs> and, <laughs> and you just keep not doing it? right? You continue to just tell yourself you're going to, you add it to your schedule, you make a new plan, and then you continually break that plan. Did you see my Google calendar before we started this? No. And I, mine definitely doesn't look like that either, but that is something that's definitely a bug. That is a lack of alignment with what do you want? What are you prioritizing and, or what are you not prioritizing that's important to you? Okay. So we're going to move on from that one. Step one is list those things that are bugging you. Notice how you're feeling. Notice what's being, what's bugging you. Notice what promises you're not able to, or not willing or not choosing to keep with yourself. Um, just what is not going according to the plan that you have, the vision that you have for your business and how you want to feel and the tasks you want to do on a daily basis. Okay. Step one, list those things out. Step two, is you're going to put them in on a piece of paper. If you could like draw a line down, you know, down the middle, you're going to have um, the list of what's bugging you. And the next column is going to be um, basically the solution list. So this is where I get really um, like put on my, my like, I don't know, drill sergeant hat with my clients. And I'm like, all right, how are we going to solve it right now? We got 10 minutes. You ready? Go. So you're going to do one of three things. You're going to decide, okay, I have to solve these problems right now. Now, that doesn't mean that the solution is the right solution, but it's step one. It's data collection. So you're going to create a solution, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the three types of solutions that there are, and you're going to try it on for a while, and maybe that solution doesn't feel good. So then you're going to, that's going to continue to stay on your bug list, right? Because you didn't fix the problem. So then you're going to try something different. And you're going to try something different. And this is the reality of life. Like, I don't even want to say of business. This is the reality of life. There is no one size fits all. There is no one fix. There is like the, the solution that works today might not work next month because your kids are home for the summer because, you know, so there's, there's, it's okay. And it's actually really good for you to try different solutions. You didn't fail because the solution you tried didn't work. You learned what does and doesn't work for you. So I think we we are so quick to shame ourselves when we can't work through an obstacle quick enough, but it's not about being perfect, right? It's not about having the perfect schedule, the perfect solution, being the perfect CEO. That's just not real life. No, no, that doesn't happen. Not even in movies does that happen. <laughs> <laughs> so step two, let's talk about the solutions. So there's three ways that you can solve a pollution, a, a pollution, a solution. You're going to either create a solution. So step one is just like, oh, well, this isn't working, so I can do this instead. OK, so it's just what would be the obvious solution? I'll give you some examples in a minute. The second option is to dump it, ditch it. So you're going to just say, you know what? Right now, I'm not going to worry about exercise. I am focusing on X, Y and Z right now. And I just don't have the capacity to let myself put that into my calendar. Maybe instead I'm going to work on my nutrition. I got to eat three times a day anyway. I don't have to go for a walk. So let me just focus on what I can do, right? So this is how we, we find solutions. So we're going to create a solution. We're going to ditch whatever it is that's currently in our way, kind of put it on the back burner or let it go. And the third is to delegate. So you're going to either outsource, hire a, a virtual assistant to help you in your business, hire somebody to clean your house for you and come do laundry once a week, um, or get your family more on board with helping out, you know, if it's something like that, or the VA would be helping out with some of these tasks in your business. So you're going to solution, create a solution, you're going to ditch it, or you're going to delegate it. Those are the three options that you have. So not everything that we want to do or want to get done needs to get done. And that's the point. And definitely not everything needs to be done by you. Or right now. Or right now. This kind of goes back to like when you have money goals, one of them has to lead. When you have business goals, almost always one of them has to be the lead. Right. So this is about identifying those those obstacles. So 
Um, and then, and then identifying what's the most pressing one to solve. And I'm going to tell you how, how we get there with the second tool that I'm going to walk you through in a minute. So the, the saying that just came to my mind is if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. If you always do what you've always done, you will always get what you always got. The results are not going to change if you keep doing the same things over and over again. So this is about identifying what is in your way and what can we do about it? And it's about thinking outside the box and looking at things differently. You do not have to be the one to do all the things in your home, to do all the tasks in your business. It can be really hard to outsource. It can be really hard to release the control to make sure that we're doing things really well to the standard that we want. And it can be really hard to let that go at first. Now I'm like delegate everything, but that was a really hard um, first step to take. So there can be a lot to those delegation or to those decisions you make. So let me give you an example. If on your bug list, something as simple as writing emails to your, you have an email list and there's something that's been bugging you, you want to write or, you know, email writing is something that's been a challenge for you. It bugs you. Every time you think about writing an email, you, you put it off or you're like, ugh, I'll do it later. And you're just not sending your email, your email list as many as you would like to be doing. You feel like you could be nurturing that list more, better, but you don't like writing emails. So you procrastinate writing them. It's making you feel like you're behind and you're failing in this area of your business. So there's three options. The solution option would be schedule in 20 minutes of email writing daily, once a week, whatever you feel is, is appropriate for you. And you set a timer, you, you know, sit down, grab a coffee, get your, get your computer out and 20 minutes, you are only thinking about email writing. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to repeat that as, as you schedule it in. And that's the solution. There are no rules. You're the boss. You get to, you know, once a week, once a month, whatever, whatever you feel is better than what you're doing now. Right. The second option there is dumping. Like let's just dump it or ditch it. Maybe ditch is a better word than dump. <laughs> um, um, my brain always goes like, I have a house full of boys. So like potty talk. Um, <laughs> let's go. Let's, let's change it to ditch. Let's ditch it. So we're, we're just not going to email right. Who says we have to write emails to our email list just because we have one? If that's not a priority right now, there's more pressing issues. Let's just stop doing it and let it go for now or delegate it. Hire somebody like a copywriter or a virtual assistant to repurpose content into emails. So it would take them very little time in that sense. Um, and that would be a way for you to solve that bug. And so Marley and I have been through several seasons of email, specifically email. There was a season where at the same time, both of us were, we knew we needed to be writing emails. We knew we needed to be nurturing. And yet it felt like that is not like, I don't want to do that. I never want to do that actually. Um, and so we ditched it for a while. We put it at the very bottom of the list of obstacles that needed to be dealt with. And then when we felt like we had the capacity to find a solution for that obstacle, we hired it out immediately. And I don't, ever remember writing a single email my entire business. <laughs> yeah. Because I haven't. <laughs> we ditched it and then we delegated it. Yep. Solving it was not in the cards for us. So that's how we handled that. So that's how you walk yourself through. Here's the bug. Am I going to find a solution, ditch it or delegate it? And which of those three are you going to do? And how is that going to look? Okay. So that's step one. That's the first, the bug list. What is bugging you? Um, and then what is the solution that you're going to create? So there's only two steps to the bug list. The next list, and this is um, where I talk a lot about asking yourself really powerful questions and asking yourself the same question in different ways. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes when you're asked a question, you know, what's bothering you right now can be, can you can have one answer. And if somebody asked you, um, you know, what's going really well in your business right now? Okay, and what might be holding some of those things back from being even better? It's still what's bugging you right now, but it's just asked slightly different through a different lens. You're kind of thinking about what's going well, but then what's not making them even better. Like it's just a way to get deeper, to dig, to look at things from a slightly different angle. And it'll bring different things out of you when someone asks you that same question two or three different ways. So we've got to get really good as entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, asking ourselves really powerful questions multiple ways. So the yes list, we had, we did the bug list and now we're doing the yes list. So this is a different way of looking at the same thing. The yes list is simply having a list on your desk of what am I dying to say yes to right now? What have you been dying to say yes to right now? 
So it's very similar. And any time throughout the week that you've been saying, I really want to start working out more, <laughs> we're going to use that as our example, because we're going to do it. Um, I really want to start prioritizing my health more, or I really want to email my email list more. I've been dying to, to nurture that email list. So what is on that list of I've been dying to say yes to this thing? And it might be a lot shorter than the bug list because usually you have a few things that are really like you've been really wanting to do and are really pressing and on your heart. And so you're going to keep that list handy. And throughout the week, throughout the next month, you're going to do the same thing three days. You can even give yourself one day. Like what's just today? What's bugging you? And then what's on your yes list? So if money and time were no obstacle, you had all the time in the world, you had all the money in the world, what would you be dying to say yes to right now? So you didn't have any obstacles in your way and you could have or do or create anything that you really wanted. What is on that list? So the example, you want to be able to treat yourself more. You want to go get your nails done. You want to go out for, take yourself out for lunch once a week or go out with a girlfriend or, um, you know, go on a trip. Like you might be wanting to do something more elaborate, mm -hmm. but you want to treat yourself. You want it to be something for you. So you're going to first go, what's on my bug list and what's on my yes list and start identifying if there's any patterns. So there, there often are items on both lists that when you really think about it, they look the same. So maybe on your bug list, it's bugging you that you don't have enough cash flow. And then on your yes list, you've been dying to treat yourself more. And is the reason you haven't been treating yourself more because you don't have enough extra income? Maybe that is like, oh, well, on my list, nothing else is, is lining up here. But those are two things that are essentially the same problem. So that tells me it's a really big priority that you need to work through. Yeah. So the things that you can see on both lists are usually the biggest bugs or the biggest um, goals or aspirations that are probably something you need to put to the top of your priority list to tackle. What's really fun about this yes list is sometimes one of the things that you do get to say yes to solves multiple obstacles on your bug list. Yeah. So an example of that, let's just use a housekeeper. Let's say you want to hire a housekeeper. Um, that's like something you've been wanting to do forever, right? And you finally say yes to that. And what you realize after hiring this person is you're no longer looking around your house when you're on client calls with that anxiety, like oh, I have all this to do when I get off of this call. I don't know when I'm going to have time. And then you realize you have more hours to work your business because you're not folding laundry or mopping your floors or vacuuming. You don't have to do those things because you've hired it out. So not only did you get your mental space back, but you've also gotten time back in your day. So one yes list line item solved so many obstacles that you had on your bug list. Yeah. And it sounds like, um, brain, like I use the word brain, the term brain space. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's giving you brain space back to focus on what really matters to you. Yeah. So let me walk you through. I mentioned at the beginning of this that I, um, I created this process, this strategy of uh, overcoming obstacles and identifying obstacles and creating solutions from a time in my business where I um, was really wait, like pulling myself in multiple directions emotionally. And so I'm going to just kind of paint this picture for you. So imagine that you're a work at home mom, you've got a new baby at home and your business is killing it. It's the most successful that it's ever been. Your newborn's happy, content, sleeps well, snuggles, like it's easy peasy and you're building your business and you've never felt more in control of your time and your dream of being a work at home mom. Um, and, and everything is just flowing really, really well. And as you continue to work and grow your business in between naps and snuggles and all that fun stuff, your baby starts to grow up and becomes a little more mobile and suddenly is only napping once a day um, instead of twice a day. And they're short five times a day and they're shorter than they used to be. And so you're doing a lot of transition and your time is becoming less and less yours. And while you love 
being at home with that little one. That was your dream. It's been bugging you that you're not able to work as much as you would like to. Mm -hmm. So your bug list, you add to that list. I want to work more. I need more time to work my business, dedicated time. And then on your yes list, you've got on there. And this is what I came to when I was starting my, my coaching business, which was, I was dying to say yes to finding childcare for my, my baby, my son. But I had so much guilt about the thought of doing that because I wanted to raise him. I wanted him at home with me. I didn't want to send him somewhere else. And I was really pulling myself in the, I want to work more. I want to send him to daycare, but I don't want to send him to daycare. So when let's analyze this, this is how we use these tools, the solutions of working more. um, I mean, I could have said I need to just bring someone into my home once a week. I could have, I could have uh, worked more in the evenings or early in the morning before he woke up. Um, I could have asked my husband if, you know, his lunch hour could be dedicated to me working because he also works from home, but he has a, he's not self-employed the way I am. He doesn't create his own schedule. So there, there could have been some solutions just in our home, keeping him home with us Mm -hmm. and me working really, you know, outside of normal work hours to maintain that. That didn't feel like it was going to align with the lifestyle that I want. I don't want to wake up at five in the morning every day and I don't want to work after my kids are in bed and, you know, be just exhausted, you know, work all night, work all morning and then survive during the day. That didn't feel like a good solution for us. So on my yes list, I saw, okay, I've been dying to say yes to daycare. I, on my bug list, I really want to work more. This is pressing. This is telling me that maybe I need to try it. Maybe daycare will be the, the solution that I've been waiting for. And it'll bring a lot more joy to all of us. It'll be beneficial to our baby to give him that social experience of playing with other kids um, versus getting the the leftovers of me while I'm scrambling between taking care of him and trying to work my business because he's so busy (laughs) as he got more mobile, right? I can't just put him down on the floor anymore while I'm working because he could just lay there and be happy, right? (laughs) Before he could roll over and start crawling and getting into the plants and all the things, right? Where you got to Hawkeye them. So putting on my CEO hat, I was able to analyze that and go, all right, you know, it's time to make a decision. And it, it isn't always as simple as daycare or not daycare. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of steps between daycare and not daycare. You know, hire childcare twice a week for two hours. Ask, ask a mom, ask another mom to swap childcare with you. I'll take your kids one afternoon a week. You take my, like so much room for solutions in between the yes and the no, or like the, the all going all the way or not doing it at all. We get very all or nothing mentality when it comes to these things, especially when it comes to something as emotional of a decision as our kids. Mm-hmm. So just the, the black and the white of it is looking at both lists and going, what is, what is really on both lists here? Because that's the thing I need to solve. And I made the decision for myself to go out and find childcare. We started with part-time, which felt really good. It was two to three days a week. And I could pick them up early because I have the flexibility to do that. I could drop them off late, which I still do many days. And we have our nice quiet mornings and we let them be long winded and um, we snuggle and, and then we get to it and he has fun. I I get my work done and, um, and everybody's happy. So that's how you use those tools to problem solve both things in your business, both things in your home or your personal life in the relationships that you have. This tool is a universal. These tools are universal to just identifying obstacles and creating solutions to resolve them. Mm -hmm. And they are so simple and silly. And like the title, you know, the, the name, like it's just what's bugging me, write it down. Like it's so simple, but so important and such a key skill to creating success and happiness especially as an entrepreneur, because if you stay in the struggle, if you stay in the obstacle, if you stay in the anxiety, then you stay where you are, what level you are in business at right now. That's where you're going to stay. Because if you cannot see past an obstacle, then you don't get through the obstacle, which means you don't get all the good stuff that's waiting on the other side of that obstacle. If you can't do this on your own, 
make sure you have someone who can see your blind spots. Marley is that person for me. Um, we just did this recently for me deciding if I was going to homeschool, then deciding, yes, 100% or homeschooling. We've already bought the curriculum. Now I'm feeling anxiety about exactly what you just went through. He's going to be here all day, every day. When am I going to work? So we are actually going to start a really fun um, after show, podcast after show. So the Wednesday after a podcast is published, we are going to go deeper into a topic on Instagram. So if you are not following both of us, make sure that you are now. Um, it's in the show notes of this episode, every episode, I believe. Um, but we are going to go into exactly how we went through the bug list and the yes list for me um, as it relates to time working my business and making sure I'm giving 100% to my son when he's home Um first grade homeschooling. So this is going to be something where we can answer your questions, your specific questions. If you think of a question when you're listening to an episode, now you can send it to us and we can answer it live on the after show. Um, but as it relates to this bug list, yes list, we use it for everything now. We use it for our home, for our family, for our business. We use it for our clients. We use it for everything because it's simple. It is easy to do. It doesn't take a lot of resources. It takes a few minutes of your quiet time, right? It takes a few minutes to write down everything that's bugging you, everything that you want to say yes to. Are we going to find a solution? Are we going to get rid of it? Or are we going to delegate it to somebody? It is so simple that it almost feels like it's too simple. Mm -hmm. So if you have any questions about um, this tool, these tools that Marley has, message her on Instagram and let her help you walk through this. Um, let her help you figure out what your obstacle is right now, what your number one obstacle is, and the easiest way to get over that obstacle so you can get to the next level in business. Um, and look for us on Wednesday on Instagram.